Hello, everybody. Welcome in. <clears throat> I don't have very long for this video, but I promised a video for the next one video for the next seven days. <laughs> a video a day for the next seven days is what I was supposed to say. Here I go making mistakes right away. Thank you so much for joining in. As I said in yesterday's video, I so appreciate each and every one of you. I cannot express how happy you have made me. So thank you again for tuning back in. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the bell for notifications as well. And please share me out to any friends that you think would enjoy the channel because I'm trying to grow myself uh, much, much larger uh, in terms of viewership. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. On my desk, a few show and tell items. Again, because I was packing and feverishly packing last night, I thought, what isn't going to necessarily stay with me? So I brought a few things that aren't going to stay, and I wanted to show them before I sell them off. And they're antiques, and um, some are glass, and some are um, jewelry. And I'll go over to the light box um, in just a few minutes here. So uh, welcome, happy Monday to everybody, and thank you again for joining in. So uh, first and foremost, I had brought a Lodes Diaspora vase to one of my uh, videos, and it had such a great response because people said it was reminiscent of Tiffany glass, uh, like Favril Tiffany. And that is true, you know. Um, Lotz is a, a, a glassworks, you know, turn of the century, true antique that is exceptional in its um, craft, its design, and its color. And this is a diaspora miniature cabinet vase. And it's considered a cabinet vase. Its only job was to be very pretty and sit inside of a cabinet. So it's a very small size. Um, and Lotz Diaspora has always been one of my favorites. And I'll bring this over to the light box so that you can get a closer inspection. They always have this sheared and polished bottom. And the inventory uh, sticker was from the collection that it was from. Uh, but I left it on there. And the color and the, the patterning was just fantastic. So that started my Monday with a smile. And... Because it's so small, it's probably going to make the trip with me. So that may not be a sell. I'm deciding as I go in a way. This one is Bohemian Glass. And again, could I say that it's Kralik, um, you know, or, or Rinskopf? I'm not going to really sign off on a maker on this one. More than likely Rinskopf. More than likely. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm not going to sign off on that just yet. But um, it's encased. So there's two layers of glass, the red. Uh, with a clear body, and you can see that evident on the bottom. So there's like that clear kind of body that that's encased over the surface of the bread. Uh, and it's really beautifully done. Almost looked like art pottery in its approach, um, and its size is beautiful. Uh, sheared top, so sheared and polished top. And you can tell that this hasn't been cut down like most from damage because the enameled edge kind of indicates that that's where they stopped this, you know, so that has not been cut down. So that's kind of refreshing to see a piece of antique turn of the century glass that hadn't been cut down. And the enameling is just so beautifully done. The uh, gradation in the white and the color play of the, you know, uh, robin's egg blue on this red ground with white and yellow. Very springtime, very lovely, and very classy. So that is not going to make the move with me, even though it's small, because my affection for certain things has changed over the years. And I will get into videos on how collectors kind of... Um, um, advance their collections over time by deaccessioning and selling off and being healthy with their collections and then realizing what their true passions are. And, um, you know, at times I, I wasn't necessarily a hoarder, but I most certainly kept way more than I should have. Um, and, you know, um, I'm kind of glad that I did because it was inventory that then I sold, you know, and, and made substantial money. This one is by Bill and it's, um, Birch. Field. I wrote it down. Uh, dates were uh, 1942. I think he was born and he passed away in 2012. At least that's what I wrote down on this one when I had researched it years ago. And it's a magnum paperweight. Look at the push and pull of the light through this um, and the ribbon work. And it's almost latticino in its technique. Um, it's not quite there for Latticino, um, technically, but boy, is it close. And then we have a central medallion on the inside. And again, this is encased. So look how small the design is, you know, on the inside of this glass dome. And then look how it's magnified to fill the space once it's passed through this optical dome of clear glass. 
but the craft on that and the skill that it took this artist to make these individual ribbon canes, apply them together, blow them so that they didn't kind of all run together. But boy, is that fantastic. And again, my paperweight collection, um, it, it's, uh, <laughs> it's definitely out of control. But uh, some of these were just so fantastic. And the size of this one just made me incredibly, incredibly happy. So there's that one. And um, I just, I love it. I could look at it all day. You know, it's just that special thing that, uh, you know, that was also from a thrift store back in the day. I think it was uh, $30, I think. And I think today I could probably get like $275 for that one. Uh, but just incredibly special. Um, a Arts and Crafts um, Heights, Heinz Art Metal Studio Lamp. And this is definitely Arts and Crafts, its mission. So what you're seeing is bronze and sterling silver. So you've got a bronze body and then you've got sterling silver applique and again if i were to polish the silver the push and the pull of that surface would be so much more dramatic but it is considered a helmet shade lamp so this looks like a helmet um, and it's the helmet shade lamp and look at the um the the way this is patinaed even the socket was patinaed by the company to to blend it into the rest of the lamp it does have its pull chain that works so that turns it on and off and um, just the way the, the base design matches the shade, and it is a pine cone design, so which is very arts and crafts, very naturalistic. I love the fact that this was so intact, you know, that this had such great surface, and it is signed on the bottom. Let me show you the original sticker. Now, people wouldn't know that that's Heinz Art Metal. Boy, I wish I could get closer for you. Let's see if we can get that in without washing. There we go. So uh, there's the Heinz Art Metal Studios label. And if that, if that label or sticker was gone off the felt bottom, people would never know, except, you know, dealers and collectors like myself would know that it's a Heinz Art Metal. But it's, you know, if that label was gone, we wouldn't be sure of the company that produced that at the turn of the century. But boy, what a, a fantastic, you know, bungalow style uh, lamp. And it, it's small in its structure, but boy, is it mighty in its presentation, you know? And I've always loved mission items. And I think why, and I'll get into this again later on when I could kind of lecture you a little bit, but the arts and crafts movement put artists like myself on the map, took a stand, the arts and crafts movement took a stand against the industrial age, and it took a stand and it tried to bring handmade items to the masses. And as an artist, that's why I'm here today. You know, this movement gave me not the necessary luxury, but gave me the platform to still produce and make items as machines continue to try and put artists like me out of business. <laughs> so um, I've always been fascinated with the arts and crafts or the mission movement of the turn of the century. And again, you know, can people fight over arts and crafts? It started at different times in different places. So we can technically say it started around 1890, 1895. I don't like to say that as much because I think in its purest form, it started around 1900 and ran through around 1915. Uh, in the 1918, you know, it started to transition into Art Deco and you have other time periods simultaneously being in place, Art Nouveau, Edwardian. So there were overlaps of time periods. So again, when you get into something, it's based on design more than it is time period when it comes to arts and crafts per se. All right. So uh, a little bit of a history lesson there. And I hate lecturing people. You know this. Um, this is what started my journey on, on YouTube. And it was in one of my shorts. And I'll take this over to the light box so you can get a whole view of that. It's 105 carat not heated or unheat treated aquamarine. And it's an incredibly important gemstone. Uh, and I'll get into that in a little while. But this is what started my journey on YouTube. And of course, before I put it back in safety deposit where it belongs, I wanted to bring it because I still had access to it. Nine minutes in, and I don't want to bore you ever. I, I never want to be a snooze fest. <laughs> and um, I owe this to Lynn. Lynn is a viewer who, again, there's not any of you that leave me a comment that I don't read or I don't listen to, and this is further proof of it. So Lynn asked if I had a collection of rosaries. And um, as a Catholic, I and as a person who appreciates all religions, 
I decided that uh, rosaries were something very important because they were so beautiful and so expertly made and um, revered by the person who owned them. Most people and most women back then could only afford one rosary. Most of them, well, I shouldn't say much. Well, yes, most. Most are a lesser metal than sterling, and most are nickel or brass or uh, silver plated. Uh, most of them were from Italy, produced in Italy at the time. And um, these are all sterling silver. So there's two rows of them, and I, I wish I could kind of separate the two rows for you. But here is, is one row of them, and the crosses and the detail on the crosses, I so wish I could get closer. And you know what? I might be able to. I hope that I don't disrupt this whole rack and make them swing and sway, and I'm probably going to. So, okay, let's calm them down so um, it doesn't, you know, drive you all crazy. <laughs> but there's two rows. So here's the first row of this one, and the crosses were just magnificent because they're so ornate. And each one had its own personality. Most of the crystals on these are Austrian crystal. And then this back row. So then there's this back row on this one. And the cross is, again, really, really special. Each one well thought out. Each one with, with such ornate and such beautiful design. The uh, details on these. And I think my fascination with having these uh, back then. And then there's two other. Sorry. Let, let's see here. Um, let's see if I can grab these. This is going to be tough, <laughs> but some have their original tags from Italy, so I left those on, so those were never preyed on. Uh, no one ever used them. Um, look how I'm peering, <laughs> peering around this, um, but most are so ornate and so beautiful, and the oxidation just really furthers the surface. And um, some of the crosses have lilies and hearts and um, secondary elements, design elements, that were so beautiful. This one has uh, like roses, like uh, roses on the four corners. Um, this one in the center medallion, and I don't remember what these are called, but in the center medallion, it's a clover, and it has Mary and the Holy Spirit, and it looks like maybe one of the apostles or Joseph, but um, Again, the detail on these, and being so miniature, let me move this row out of the way, <laughs> and then let me get to, so there's this row uh, behind, and again, these are all sterling silver, and, you know, uh, these are displayed uh, in my house, and I would say that this collection, here, let me scoot these out of the way, because this one cross, look at the size of the cross on this one, um, that's fantastic and you know that that cross was probably passed down in the family for a long time and then put onto that rosary uh, because there's j j j it's again I kind of lose what I want to say uh, because there's so much that I, I think doesn't need to be said about devotional items that someone used to feel closer to God and feel closer to their religion um, and these yeah, you know, um, these probably took me about, um, this, uh, I would say about 20, I've been at this collection for probably about 24 or 25 years now, and, um, I, I do have more than this, but the ones that I didn't put on the rack are ones that are in their boxes, uh, that were in their fitted boxes that they were presented in. And if you ever see a rosary box, you'll know it because it's normally velvet on the outside. It's hinged, like kind of a clamshell. And on the inside, it usually has a devotional picture on the inside, whether it be Mary or most of the time it's Mary. Um, and they have little hooks, you know, next to the picture of Mary. And that's where the rosary would be hung inside the box, and then the box would be closed for a presentation. Um, and again, I would love to be able to talk about each one. What I might do is I might be able to take down maybe two or three of them and bring them over to the light box so you can see some of the details. Um, and that was for Lynn. So Lynn, thank you so much for being a wonderful viewer and mm, always filling me up when um, I need it. And you all do that for me. Trust me, I, I read the comments uh, when I'm getting ready for bed at night. And um, 
I kind of bask in the glory that you provide for me. So thank you so much again. I'm going to pause you guys 14 minutes in. I definitely have to get to work today because I have a huge pickup down at the gallery for an auction that we had. And um, I so appreciate your time. Um, oh, and the jewelry that I'm wearing, uh, we'll get into that at another time there. Well, I'll, I'll do the Lucite bracelet in, in the in the light box. Um, and then a Bakelite necklace, random dots, and a turquoise pendant. Uh, and a ring that I that I had made. Uh, so and a ring that I, I love and um, I decided to wear today just because I had kind of a fall color thing going on. So uh, let's see. I think that's it for now. I looked around. I did everything I needed to do. Here I go. Get distracted. Thank you so much. Wait one second. I'll be right back with you. Hold on. Okay. Wait one second. Okay, so you successfully made it back to my light box, and here is the aquamarine, and now you can see in all of its glory why I invested in this gemstone. So it was originally from Ukraine, um, and this was actually cut and faceted in Russia, and it was done by a master gem cutter, and uh, that was around 1993 or 1994. The rough crystal, uh, that this came from, the, the large mother crystal that this came from um, um, as aquamarine was featured on the cover of Lapidary Journal. And the stone on the cover was half green, which is untreated with heat, and half blue. And it was uh, two pieces and it was put back together so half of the crystal was heat treated and turned it that normal aquamarine blue and then this is is not heat treated so it leans a very yellow seafoam green look at the faceting on the stone and being 105 carats is 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 an unheard of size for an aquamarine but well i shouldn't say that they're very difficult uh to find that large but um, you can find them even larger. But the unusual part, and the part that motivated me to purchase this, was the fact that it was not heat treated. And the proportions of this stone, truly magnificent. And right there across the stone, the thing that I loved the most, right there, is one of the needle-like inclusions that's a strong indicator of aqua marine. You will normally see those much smaller and spaced throughout the stone, so get out your loops and make sure you're looking at blue or light green stones because when you see a needle-like inclusion like that, that is the telltale sign, one of the telltale signs that you have aquamarine. And there's a few off to this other end as well. You'll catch it in the light when I tip the stone. But that is a magnificent, you know, and uh, do I want to say museum grade? Um, not because I own it would I say museum grade, but I would say if anybody owned it, that that is a museum grade gemstone. And at 105 carats, uh, let's zoom in on it. 105 carats. It was just incredibly, incredibly special. And I wanted to make sure that you saw that because that's what started my journey on YouTube. That's the thing that started it because I basically did a short on that and it got so many views right away that I thought, hey, maybe this YouTube thing will work. <laughs> um, on to Bakelite bracelets. And um, let's see, I'll put them back in the bowl that they were in because these used to live in this bowl. Let me zoom back out because we're awfully close. Let me zoom back out for you. Let's go right about there. Um, and I can't believe how dirty my hands are all the time. They're always so dirty. Oh, and my chipped nail polish. I did that on purpose too. <laughs> I'm most known for my nail polish for some reason. <laughs> Ignore my information and focus on my nail polish. <laughs> uh, all right, so enough sarcasm for the day because it'll get me into trouble. Um, bad sense of humor sometimes. So we have two Bakelite bracelets and these had been with me a very long time, but I wanted to make sure that you knew why Bakelite is still so sought after and collectible. The carving and the technique that went into both of these. I love the abstract swirls on this one and the color, and I really loved the orange and the flowers on this one. So we have two really powerful, very thick-walled Bakelite bracelets. Those are from the 1940s. Again, holding their value when they're this good. So I wanted to make sure you saw those before they got packed up and moved. And then um, this bowl. So this is a Chinese bowl. And, you know, can some people go with the fact of, you know, the the general term of Peking glass 
I'm not going to make a comment on that, uh, but some people would consider even this Peking glass. And again, I'm, I'm not going to go there about terms. Um, I'm just going to leave that unsaid. This is encased glass. So there's two layers of glass. There's paper white, and then there's red on the outside. And then an artist so carefully carved away the red on the outside and left these flowers. So this is in fact cameo glass. So these flowers are cameo carved, much like the cameos in jewelry. Uh, those are always carved or most always carved in either Italy, which is the most prolific place, and sometimes um, Germany. Well, this is carved in China. And the age on this bowl, you know, these could be as early as the, well, let's say the late 19th century. This one is more 1920s, uh, based on the carving and the technique. But look at the detail the artist got into those flowers, put in the stamens and pistils, uh, the leaves and tendrils. Really fantastic, you know, absolutely beautiful, really well done. The craft is magnificent. And I liked the overall size, you know, it was a small enough size uh, that you could use it for anything. But I loved that bowl, and I thought I am going to bring that as well because you have all responded to glass. Speaking of the glass, here is the Lotz Diaspora. Again, turn of the century, um, produced by Lotz, and just a, a special size. And look at the color play of the electric blue and the lime green on the inside. That is goodness. That's exactly what that is. And I love the miniature size. I love the fact that it was so small. So that is definitely going to survive the move and go with me. I really, really loved it. And I've handled a lot of Tiffany Favril glass. And I'm, I'm going to say, I think this rivals, uh, and, and competes very well with Tiffany art glass. I really do. The craft is magnificent. And Lotz is starting to gain a lot more traction and value. And it's refreshing to see that, you know, don't buy by name, buy by end result. That's what I've always said, and I stick to it. This is the one that I made a comment on being in case. So you have clear glass on the outside of electric swirled red, and then this really beautifully handled and beautifully modeled spring bouquet of enamel work on the outside. I loved the luster, and I really respected the composition of the floral. And um, again, it's not, it doesn't have the pontal. Um, it does not have the pontal, so it's blown from this direction and then cut off um, at the top. So it's kind of the reverse of what it normally is. Normally pontals are on the bottom. But um, beautifully encased, beautifully handled, really fantastic craft, and right at the turn of the century. Again, and I loved the size. Very small, very beautiful, very elegant. You know, I considered that elegant and in a way timeless. And this is the William Burkefield paperweight. This is the Magnum. But again, look at the craft on this and the color play. Uh, again, um, so gigantic and uh, a true testament to this artist's skill and this artist's craft. And to blow this, you know, out of molten glass and to make sure that it maintains its presence uh, with the colors and the division. And I, again, it, it reminded me of like a jellyfish in a way, a, an abstract jellyfish, for a lack of a better uh, description. But beautiful caning on the inside and beautiful bicolored ribbons and the twist Again, uh, I, I really loved it, uh, and I, I loved its size and its craft, uh, but again, that's probably not going to make the move with me. For some reason, I'm just not, you know, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> These were the um, sterling rosaries that I decided to bring over from the rack. The crosses, like I said, are magnificent. Each one is so special. And then the stations in the center here, um, they have always been something extremely special to me because they were loved by the person that had these. And again, the sterling versions were, were much more expensive back in the day. So I do not know how I managed to tangle everything up. But that's why they're on a rack, and that's why I don't take them off. But Lynn, this is for you, sweetheart. This is what I owed you, Lynn. I told you I would do it, and here is just a few of my cherished sterling silver and crystal rosaries, and I've loved the fact that each bead's hand-faceted, Aurora Borealis crystal, and uh, a lot of them are leaded crystal. Just, again, just truly devotional items that are beautiful, and I loved them so much. So, Lynn, that was for you, sweetheart. 
And then I'll get into, oh, here's a picture frame that I decided I was going to sell. It is an Art Nouveau original. And of course, we're not going to get it in the whole frame. That's not going to happen. But look at the naturalistic, beautiful design of birds and trees, ginkgo leaves and berries and more ginkgo leaves and, and the whiplash lines, um, a tree. And then down at the bottom, if I can get it in, there's a little face in the forest, like a little pixie. And then there's part of the tree. Notice how the whole frame, let me zoom out just a little bit and see if we can get more of that in there. There we go. I don't want to see too much of my light box. And I always have dirt in the light box. <laughs> uh, and it wouldn't be a Jason video without dirt in it. <laughs> but look at the finish on the cast iron. And the back is very, very early. There are reproductions of these frames out there and just be very, very careful. You will notice, I'm going to flip this this way and see if we can uh, get this in. So just see the detail of like the root system and the root system on that side. So the whole frame is very whiplash, the whole, the whole shape of this. And again, I'm so frustrated because I should have had that out earlier for all of you. And then just a few pieces of jewelry and then I am going to hightail it to work because I'm going to be late unless... Unless I go soon, and I don't want to leave you guys, but uh, I uh, and you ladies, but here's a piece of uh, jade, uh, jadeite carving and uh, 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 dragons and Chinese and uh, a beautiful front view dragon face on the front of this. And again, I'll, I'll bring this back because that needs to be displayed on white. So let's let's skip that for now. Let me put this off to the side. Um, and now, you know, I feel like I'm in a panic. So then, of course, I start to rush and get frustrated and start to make mistakes with what I say. This is 14 karat gold. It's jadeite and natural ruby eyes. But I loved the grace of this little bug. And the reason I show you this is it was, uh, let me think here. This one was... Um, $25 and I think they thought it was costume or brass or gold plated because of the oxidation on the gold uh, but when you start to see these secondary details of the hand engraving and the sensitivity to the, the legs look at how finely modeled that is you know that that's not gold plated you know that that's gold uh, and it did test to be 14 karat uh, I think you know, retail on that, I could probably get around 500. So there was a, a big increase in that. Another thrift store mistake that I had set out because I was, again, going through these things. And thank you so much for enjoying these show and tells because I, I don't feel like I'm giving you enough information sometimes. Uh, but I'm trying my best to listen to the comments and um, give you what you're looking for, you know, in the channel and still train, still staying true to what I feel is important for, for me and what I want to share. These were also misidentified, um, and they were thought of to be brass and costume in, I would say, uh, the Miriam Haskell style. And of course, Miriam Haskell was looking at items that were made like this to make her jewelry. And these are high carat gold, so they're 14 and 18 karat gold. And they are seed pearl. So all these are wired on. The earring backs have been redone. So that is not an old earring back. But these, in fact, would be very early Victorian or very late Georgian. So around 1820 to about 1835. They're definitely before 1850. Uh, and are they Italian? More than likely, yes. And sorry that I can't hold them still. Um, but uh, I'm fighting with things today. <laughs> Some days are easier than others, and today is Monday after all. <laughs> so uh, seed pearl wired on and gold, but just absolutely beautiful earrings. Uh, again, being misidentified, I will make several thousand dollars on those, uh, and I'm, I'm super excited about that, so I wanted to share those. A tiny little pin that's been a favorite of mine for a long time, and I just wanted to bring this on because he's a favorite. Look at this little whimsical and, and quite charming gold brooch. It's a, a duckling with a top hat with diamonds, uh, a ruby eye, and he's got a cigar in his mouth, and he's got a diamond wing. So there was something so 
precious and so important about this. And uh, it was a splurge. You know, this was not inexpensive back in the day. Uh, and uh, I just, I won't sell them because look how little, but his personality is giant. I loved things that made me smile and I love things that made me happy because sometimes life can really get you down. Um, and if you don't fight back, you know, um, it's kind of a miserable place to live. Uh, so, you know, you got to fight back. And if something makes you happy, go for it. That's what I've always said. And I stay true to that. This is nephrite. So this is in the nephrite family. Uh, there's a central diamond. It's a four-leaf clover. And you know what holiday is coming up. So Jason is getting ready. <laughs> this is got um, gold hallmarks all over it on the inside, right underneath the trombone clasp. And look how this pin mechanism follows the curve of that brooch. And I'm not sure exactly why my camera is fighting so much with staying focused today. Probably because I'm antsy and moving around like a lunatic. So these are all carved out of stone. It's in such great condition. And look how natural that looks. It's the same size as a four-leaf clover. It's the same coloration. Look at the veins and look at the up and down the undulation of each leaf and the grace of that just screams i am important and i need to be worn on saint patrick's day <laughs> so um definitely one of the most beautiful and i think it's 18 carat i think i said that i think that one's 18 carat uh, gold, but look at the construction, you know, take that all in. And again, I think the advantage to come into my channel is that you will see the front, the back, the side. Um, sometimes when you look online, you're not going to see that, you know, and a flat picture doesn't help me learn. It just doesn't. This one is a hard stone cameo. Again, it was sold as glass back in the day, but this is a hard stone cameo set in 14 karat gold. The pin mechanism has been replaced. So, uh, that definitely has been replaced, but look at the gold best and the, the care that it took to get that mounted, that's about 1845 to 1855. Um, and just a classic cameo hardstone. Love the sternness of the face, but I love the grace of the headpiece and the hair. Um, again, one of those small, small treasures that I just wanted to show before, of course, it makes its move on uh, to somewhere else. Uh, let's see. I'm almost done. Thank you so much for bearing with me. And again, oh, here, let's go with this one. Just Well, let's go with this one, too. Um, oh, let's go with this one. <laughs> I don't know. There's too many to choose from. And like I said, I'm running out of time. Um, no, we're going to go with this one. <laughs> see, I changed my mind halfway through everything I do. This one I acquired at a gem show. And the reason why I'm bringing it is because Again, it's a thing of beauty, and I have to get it back in a safety deposit. So these are all diamonds. These are demantoid garnet. So they're green garnets. They're very, very rare. And uh, there's a central tanzanite cabochon. And I loved the imperfections in the tanzanite. It does lean bluish purple. And I think the color play and the design was the thing that most got me on this. But I loved it sizable. And I put it on this chain just because I thought it was, um, you know, quite a, a nice chain for this. But I loved this elegance. I loved the size. And again, I think the color and the color play is what really got me going on this. Uh, and I, I thought, what an extraordinary gem in the center. And then the way, why is my camera not staying focused? I'm getting really angry. <laughs> I never get angry on my channel. And here I am getting mad. It shows that I'm a real person. <laughs> um, so just again, look at its presentation. And I'll let you take that all in now that it's in focus. And I won't move. Look how quiet and patient I can be. I'm just kidding. I can't be quiet and patient. <laughs> All right. So then we, um, let's see here. I'm even nuts this early in the morning, just so everybody knows. And then, of course, I'm looking for the bag that it came out of. And guess what? It never came out of a bag. <laughs> Um, and then you didn't come here for my humor. I know, well, you probably did. You probably came here to watch me struggle. This is citrine and champagne diamonds. And um, this was bought from my gentleman in India. And it looks as though, yeah, I wore that and I bent that. But that's okay. I'll bend it back. I know a really good metalsmith. <laughs> um, so citrine and champagne diamonds. But look at the color saturation and the faceting on the citrine. Gemstones from India are some of my favorites. Um, their, their gemstone cutting, their technique of choosing the stones, and then the way that this was mounted. Uh, boy, I, I just, I found love. And it's a thing of beauty. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked by sharing some things. But, you know, I, I wanted you to see this. And I hope you appreciate 
the fact that I can um, bring you things of beauty and um, share some of my passion. Um, and I'm just trying to get content up at this point. This is a little emerald. And, and I want to tell you guys, be careful with emeralds. Um, because a lot of times they're flux inclusion or, or they are synthetic or they're Chatham created. This is a natural emerald uh, and I did have it checked and it's sizable, but I bought this for $3 and it was on a, a costume, just a junk chain. So don't judge your pendants by the chains they're on. And Tanya at My Jewelry Addiction, she's gone over that so many times and I'm so glad that all of you are listening to her because you've all had major scores because of it. This was on a junk chain, a, a gold-plated chain, and this, in fact, is 14 karat gold, and the emerald is very large, and it's very clean for an emerald, and then diamonds around it, but it was, I think, $3. It was 3 or $4, um, and I think it was signed up inside of... Let me see here real quick. Yeah, it's signed up inside of the enhancer top. It's signed up on the inside. Let's see. Yeah, it's signed up on the inside of it, I can't hold it still enough, but it's signed on the inside of that. And um, I think they just missed the mark. But a beautiful emerald, you know, again, not the best emerald I've ever seen, but most certainly worth $3. <laughs> um, and then a rock crystal brooch. And I should show this on a black background. Let me see. I think I, yeah, here, right in arm's reach, I have this uh, black bust. And look at this rock crystal. So a, a single piece of rock crystal, quartz crystal, that's been completely cut and carved into this beautiful leaf. They drilled it out so courageously. I would not have wanted to drill that. Drilled that out and prong set a diamond through the rock crystal for a little raindrop on the leaf. I think this is one of the most classy brooches. Um, it's, you know, and again, I've told you about my rock crystal brooch collection, but again, they're um, not in my house. I wouldn't dare store them in my house. Um, so I'll have to get them on a safety deposit, but it is signed. It is 14 karat gold, but look at the way the crystal is carved. Again, we've got this undulation and form. So the up and down really, really fantastic craft on this. And I love that the metal behind kind of creates that central portion of this leaf. So um, I, I, I've, I, I've loved this and I will always love this. That's definitely going to stay for sure. Um, show and tell is almost over. I have one more. It's kind of the grand finale. You know how I always hold out. <laughs> I always hold out on all of you. Um, and then we're going to call this a day and I'm going to get to work um, remotely on time. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, 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 this. So, um, I have sometimes when I go to the gem shows, I just let the stones tell me. And, and this one told me. So, <laughs> gemstone people are, are probably going absolutely crazy right now. Um, I would be, and I would be like, wow, look at that. So, it, Mother Nature had a heck of a good day this day. It's a hundred and I think it's 152 or 132 carats. It says right on there. But I think, let me see here. Uh, 152, 152 carat, uh, tourmaline. And, uh, it's green tourmaline, but it also starts to go into the pink family, uh, almost a peach on the outside. Look at the size of this tourmaline crystal. Um, Mother Nature had a really fantastic day this day. And, uh, I, I had to bring it home. Um, it was a gemstone specimen that I felt was, um, uh, um, very important. Uh, and so I'm glad I took the chance. And, you know, it, again, um, I could get lost in this and, and want to talk about this for, you know, for a very long time. But uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll just say that uh, Fancy Show and Tell is over for today before I pull out one more thing and then I'm 20 minutes late to work. Thank you so much for being with me. I really appreciate all of you. I'll get this all wrapped back up. Oh, and my bracelet. Um, I'll bring this bracelet into uh, the next video. It was a watch. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was not a watch. It was a clock face. Uh, that I turned into a bracelet back in the day. <laughs> so I'll, I'll bring that to the next, uh, the next show and tell. I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you again so much. Have an amazing day. And you know, I love you.